All right. This morning's Bible verses are Psalms 57, 8 through 11. Awake up, my glory, awake. Psaltery and heart. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great into the heavens, and thy trust into the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above all heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Glory. Father, we thank you for this day, for this people. Thank you, Lord, you have included us and made us family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for a oneness and a unity. So much so that when one cries, the others taste the salt of it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just love you. We adore you. We shower you with our love and adoration today. Let the church shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. This is a season that the Jews celebrate as Hanukkah started yesterday and will continue for eight days and you hear the term Judeo-Christian and that specifically means that the Jewish nation, the Hebrews celebrate the God of the old and we do too. So that connects us with Judeo because we believe in the God of the old. And then we are Christians, Christians. Yes. We believe in the Christ of the New Testament yes. and a combination. So we are Judeo-Christians. Yes. Yes. And this is a celebration time for the Jewish people called Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. And I want to take just a very few minutes, a short time, to explain because a lot of people don't understand but I appreciate our Jewish nation, people that we have pledged allegiance to. And Genesis 12, 2 says that those who bless Abraham will be blessed. And so we bless Abraham and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But this is a time of the Jewish festival of lights. Everybody say it with me, the Jewish festival of light. And I won't, Yvette, if you will, get John 9, 5. Jesus made a statement. He said, as long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. Yes. Yes. And what people don't connect that with is when you're going into chapter 10, it was a festivity and it was a commemoration of or a celebration of lights that the Jews have celebrated ever since 164 B.C. when the uh, Maccabians actually uh, Epiphanes, a Syrian soldier or general, came into Jerusalem and totally annihilated Everybody say Antiochus, Antiochus. Epiphanes. Epiphanes. Put your hand over your heart so I'll never forget. <laughs> Antiochus Epiphanes. Oh my <laughs> but he came into uh, the territory of Israel, totally annihilated their beloved temple took a sow, pig, hog, boiled it, took it inside of the temple, took of the broth and the meat and all of the, the mess from this hog 
and totally spread it, throwed it, had all, all of his army to desecrate the temple, even went into the Holy of Holies. This was their beloved city. Yes, sir. And three years later, there are actually, there is a Bible called First and Second Maccabees, or Maccabeans, however you want to say it. But it's a Bible, and it brings out all of this. And Math, Matthias Maccabees had five sons. <coughs> One of them was named uh, James Judas. And he went into, he, he just made his mind up and they, they formed a revolt. He got together and said, we're going to take our temple back. Yeah. And they had, they went in and, and conquered their city back, conquered the Syrians, and there was territory that they needed time. And I'm just condensing this. But there was ter they needed time to take over, take back their, their territory. And so they took a, actually it was a seven stick candle menorah and it had the eighth one that they used to light the seven with. And they only had enough oil supply for one day. And they said, we're going to have to make this a quick revolt. They put the oil in the menorah, lit the candles, and they only had one day's supply, and it was not long enough. They went into the second day, the third day, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, and eighth day, and the candle continued to burn. Wow. 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 God miraculously gave them an eight-day supply of oil to show them grace and mercy and, and to allow them to get and make them to understand I'm still your God. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. And so they went in and took their temple back and rededicated their temple back to them and also to the Lord, Jehovah Lord God. Then we get into John chapter 5, or John chapter 9 and chapter 10, and this was a feast of lights. Ever since they had practiced this, the, the, the Maccabeans revolt. They had continually, every year, celebrated this eight-day celebration of rededication. And so here they are in Jesus' day, and they're ready are they are into their, their eight-day celebration. And so Jesus came on the scene. Everybody say, Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up. And showed out. Yeah. And here was a man that was blind yeah. from his mama's womb. <clears throat> and Jesus, you know, he's, he was always doing not just a telling lesson, but a show and tell. Yeah. And so he took mud, made a mud pie, yeah. put it over the guy's eyes, and said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when he did, he came back seeing. Yes. And all of the Pharisees, and, and it was on the Sabbath, and they just, you know, they really made a scene, said, this guy's a devil. And when you get into chapter 10, verse 22, uh, you know, they, they made all kind of accusations. And the man said, I like it. He said, they, they called Jesus a sinner. He said, I don't know if he was a sinner or not. All I know is that I was blind and now I see. Now, I, I've got to show you this. Jesus said, in verse 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light. You and I are the eighth candlestick to light the other seven of their menorah. We are in this world 
representing Jesus Christ. Yes. And this is an eight day celebration and, and it, it, it's in their month, Kislev, and Kislev, K-I-S-L-I-E-V, but it's, it also corresponds with our time of December and we're celebrating a time of Christmas and the birth of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes. But I just wanted you to understand that Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. And as they are celebrating their Judeo yes. r religion, it's not relationship, mm -hmm. their religion that you and I today are adding Jesus Christ. We're taking up where he left off. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And this is still Hanukkah yes. and we're celebrating and we are the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand and worship our Lord God this morning. Make it? Oh, yeah. Come on, let's sing. Give him a hot. Give him a hot. Let's pray for he is worthy to be lifted up. Give him a hot. Let's pray. For he is worthy to be lifted up. Give him the highest praise. praise. For he is worthy to be lifted up. Give him the highest praise. For he is worthy to be lifted up. Singing worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. He is worthy to be lifted up. Lord, you are worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. He is worthy to be lifted up. Give him the highest praise. For he is worthy to be lifted up. Give him the highest praise. For he is worthy to be lifted up. Give him the highest praise. For he is worthy to be lifted up. Give him the highest praise. For he is worthy to be lifted up. He is worthy. Worthy, worthy, yes, he is. He is worthy to be lifted up. Lord, you are worthy. Worthy, worthy. Lift him up, 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 lift him up
drum and bass. Lift him up. Yeah, lift him up. Oh, lift him up. Come and lift him up.
Somebody praise him in this place. Somebody give him a high praise. Lord, we lift you up. We love you, Lord. Lord, we love you. We give you our praise. We honor your presence here this morning. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and welcome him into this place. Spirit of the living God, we affirm your presence here. Spirit of the living God, we affirm your presence here to heal. To heal. Spirit of God. Woo! 
on us to rest on us and to empower us to in 
church just worship him in the spirit of holiness
Brother Tommy. Jesus began to walk with his disciples. He began to reveal the word of God to them from Moses to the prophets. And they got understanding. He is the Messiah. He is our deliverer. He is our hope when there is no hope to be seen or found. And they said, did not our hearts burn within us? Oh, Lord, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Father, we see we just feel so privileged. That you're still the head of the church, Lord Jesus. Take control. There's a river of glory flowing through this house. We just want to get in that river, Lord. And we want to stay in it. We want to flow. To water the dry grounds. To refresh the hearts. To give hope to the desperate. To calm the stressed lives. To lift up those that think there's no hope for me. That God has given up on me that you would lift them right into your arms, Lord Jesus, right now through the power of the Holy Ghost and hold them and give them a big hug, Lord, and show them, let them feel your presence. Let them touch you. Let them be aware. Let their hearts burn within them, O oh Lord, that they may know that you are God. We give you all praise, power, might, dominion and glory in this house Lord Jesus we thank you you've lifted us up you've brought us out of darkness and the control of Satan and we want to praise you this day that by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we stand here washed in the blood of the Lamb. Whiter than snow. Pure. Only by the blood. We want to worship you for the blood. We want to give you thanksgiving and praise for you have forgiven all our iniquities. You've healed all our diseases. You've redeemed our life from destruction, from the hand of our enemies. We are the redeemed of the Lord, and we say so. Whom you have redeemed from the hand of our enemies, translated us out of the kingdom and grip of Satan into the presence of Almighty God, that we may show forth your praises in these last days. What an honor. What an honor that you bestow your grace upon us, O oh Lord. We feel overwhelmed this morning as we praise you and we give you thanksgiving and praise, O oh Lord. Have your own way. Have your own way. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you. For this day, this hour, don't hold back. Let the Spirit flow.
for there is a message that must come forth at this day and this hour, this time. And you're here to bring, to deliver what the head of the church is saying at this hour. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. He reigns in heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. God is long-suffering, patient, loving, tender in his mercy, everlasting in his love. I just stand back and marvel and how awesome a God we serve. And I went back in time. It seems a long time now. But it was just yesterday. When I knelt before the altar of grace and asked Jesus to come into my heart, my life changed. I was transported from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Light dawned. But I wasn't mature when I accepted Christ, nor was I, nor am I still. <laughs> There's still areas. He never stops, and we will never understand the fullness of his love, grace, mercy, kindness, long-suffering until the day we see him face to face. But he's gracious to us, and he reveals it day by day. Every day we get a little bit of revelation of how great and awesome our God is. If we seek him, he says, if you seek me with your whole heart, you will be found. I will be found by you. And so in seeking him, he instructs us. And I was thinking about the tithe and offering. And how, when I accepted Christ, nobody was going to get my money. I mean, that wasn't part of the bargain. My heart you can have. My money is mine. Actually, I didn't have any, so it was easy to say that. My husband was not a believer when I accepted the Lord, so tithing wasn't really an option for me. I, I didn't feel right to undermine that relationship and take his money and give it away to the Lord. It just didn't ring right with me. But every Sunday when they would take the offering and say the tithe belongs to the Lord, I'd go, oh. but what am I to do, Lord? I don't have it. I want to be a giver. I want your blessings. I want your joy. I want the abundance in my life. But I have nothing. And I wept when I would leave church after I got rid of the feeling of guilt. I'd go, I don't like this feeling. I want to know that I'll be blessed. And I, I don't think I can if I don't put money in those baskets. And God in his mercy and his tender love didn't say a word. I didn't feel any condemnation. He knew my heart. And one day, this is dating me a little, but we didn't have checkbooks and we didn't have credit cards. And I would go to the grocery store with cash. And one day I was counting my cash to see how much I had for my groceries. It was doled out to me. And the Lord said, you have been given authority to purchase and buy what you need for your household. You may take the tithe from there. I was so excited. I took the money out of the grocery money that I had. My grocery money went farther than usual. 
And I was so excited to give a tithe on Sunday morning to honor God. But I thought, you know, it wouldn't have happened if he hadn't gently led me. So I want to tell you, as I stand here every Sunday and I tell you the tithe belongs to the Lord, and if you're not giving your tithe, you're robbing God, that's for the mature. For those of you who aren't there yet, God will gently lead you and show you how you can arrive to a place of maturity in every area. I mean, the tithe is only one thing. God will lead you, and he will direct you. And as you just submit to him, he will show you just exactly how to get to that place where you can say, I seem to give more than I get. But if you're not there, please don't walk away feeling guilty. Walk away refreshed and renewed, knowing that God will lead you. If it's in your heart to do what he pleases him, he will show you how to please him. you to think about what if a generation would embrace the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord and that through him we can do all things what if a generation would say yes to the will of God yes. break away from what society is demanding mm. yeah. that would break away from self-centeredness and selfishness and humble themselves before the mighty hand of God what would happen if a people would walk in obedience to his voice? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Simply saying, what if we would give ourselves away? Yes. What if we would give ourselves away? I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away, oh God. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, Jesus, I give myself away yes. so you, yes, you can use me. Here I am. Here I am. Here I stand. Here I stand. Lord, my life, Lord, my life is in your hands. In your hands. Lord, I'm longing. Lord, Longing to see, to see your desires, your desires revealed in me. I give myself away. Oh, Jesus, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you, you can you take my heart, take my heart, take my life as a living, living sacrifice. All my dreams, 
take all my past. Lord, I place them in your hands. I give myself away. Oh, Jesus, I give myself away so you, you can you. I give myself away. I'm laying at the altar, Jesus. I give my so you, you, you can you. I give myself away. Oh, Jesus, I give myself away so you can you. Come on, can you say that as a prayer? Oh, my life is not my own. To you, to you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself. Come on, sing it like you mean it. My life. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you. Can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Of a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet.
prophecies fulfilling and you see the signs of the time they're peering Assistant Pastor Brother Curtis Wiggins. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. 
glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we just praise you. We magnify you and thank you for that wonderful call that's soon to come for every born again believer. For every person. For every person that's made Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives. Hallelujah. For every individual that says yes to God, you will call us and we're prepared. We are making ourselves ready. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you've done for us. There's no way we could have did it on our own. We couldn't live good enough. We couldn't work hard enough to earn the right to be called the sons of God. But only by your divine grace and your divine mercy do we stand in awe of your awesome presence. So Lord, we just love you today and we just give you praise. Lord, we do pray today you would touch hearts today that do not know Jesus Christ that their lives will be changed by the presence of God we give you glory, we give you thanks we give you honor because we're living in the last of the last days we are the generation upon whom the ends of the age has come we know that the call is going out. I pray today, Lord, that you would let the Holy Spirit of God steal every heart and every mind as I endeavor and make an attempt to preach an event that I yet comprehend, but that I know is true because your word has declared it. We praise you and thank you for this. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. It is impossible for me and my human frailty and weaknesses to preach about an event that is so beyond the wildest of my imagination. And yet the word of God has decreed and declared that the next greatest event, I believe, on God's agenda is the catching away of the church, the body of Christ. And I'm going to attempt today with all that's within me, with all the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ to talk about this event in the next few moments, to encourage those of you that are living for God to keep on living for him. For those that are not saved, I pray today that this message would tug on the bottom of your soul and it would cause a fire and a hunger to be stirred up that you'll know without a doubt that yes, Jesus is the only way to salvation. My message today is entitled One Minute After the Rapture. One minute after the rapture. Listen to these things that happen every minute, every 60 seconds. 250 babies are born every minute. That's a lot of babies. 113 of those babies that are born are born into poverty. 15 of those babies that are born have birth defects. 
Oprah Winfrey makes $523 per minute every 60 seconds. Nike, the great shoe and clothing manufacturer, makes $36,505 every minute. Every 60 seconds, three violent crimes are committed in the United States. Every minute, two auto thefts are committed in the United States. Every 60 seconds, 55,757 barrels of oil are used upon the earth. Every 60 seconds, lightning strikes the earth 360 times. Every minute, five earthquakes happen throughout the globe. Every 60 seconds, 120,673 pounds of edible food is thrown away in the United States. Every minute, 950,180, 950, 186,000 pounds of trash or garbage, garbage is thrown away in the United States. Every 60 seconds, nine new cases of AIDS and HIV infections are reported. Every 60 seconds, 107 people die. 18 die from starvation. That's amazing what can happen in one minute. 60 seconds, so many things can take place. Today I'm going to be preaching about what will happen 60 seconds, one minute after the body of Christ is relieved from this earth. 60 seconds after the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rises from the ground and we're caught up together to meet him in the air. 60 seconds afterwards, what will take place? And my message today is targeted mostly toward those who are not saved because 60 seconds after that moment, the earth will go through so many changes. The rapture, the rapture, it is one of the most important doctrines of what we call eschatology, the doctrine of last things. The word rapture is not found in the scripture. Somebody has said the rapture is not true because it's not found in the Bible. Well, my answer to that, which seems to be ludicrous, is neither is air conditioner. But we use them, and they are real. It is derived, the word rapture is derived from the Latin word Rapuri or raptus, which means to be transported from one place to another. So if we were have what we would call a transliteration of the word that we're going to talk about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it would simply be a translating from one place to another. The Greek word for rapture, or what we would call the catching away, is harpazo. It's H-A-R-P-A-Z-O. It is used seven times in the New Testament. Let me give you some references, and you would, can jot these down if you brought pen, pencil, and paper today. Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. John chapter 10, verse 12. Acts chapter 8, verse 39. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 and 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, and Revelation 12, 5. I'll repeat those in a moment. In each case where these scripture references are made referring to the catching away, it means something quickly grabbed, snared, or seized, or taken by force. Let me give those scriptures to you again, and then we'll go to our main scripture text. Matthew 13, verse 19. John, chapter 10, verse 12. Acts, chapter 8, 
verse 39. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 and 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. And Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. Our Bibles are open at this moment to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. If you would turn there with me, please, as we read our scripture text. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And if you did not bring your Bible, if you would please pay attention to the screen where the Word of God says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. Concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we will synchronize these two verses of scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul speaking about the resurrection from the dead, says this regarding the return of Jesus Christ in the catching away of what we call the rapture. He says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. These two scriptures are referencing the soon catching away. If, if the word rapture troubles you, we can use the term catching away. Is that all right? Which really literally means, as we've previously discussed, it means to be quickly grabbed, to be uh, snared, to be seized, or to be taken by Force. I believe that Jesus Christ himself, according to the word of God, at any moment could snatch or seize the church out of the earth. Now you may say, I'm waiting on this to happen. I'm waiting on that to happen. But I want you to understand we're about to get into the scripture where we need to understand there's a difference between the catching away of the church and the second advent of Jesus Christ. There's a difference between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus Christ. There are certain things that must take place before Jesus returns visibly, physically, and literally to this earth. But there's no other prophecy that needs to come to pass in order for Jesus to catch the church out of the earth. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. It could happen any moment. It could happen while I'm preaching. It could happen while you're at school. It could happen while you're at work. And that's why the Bible urges us to look for that blessed hope. Jesus, when he returns, in the catching away, not everybody is going to see him. Only those that are ready to be received of. Let's look at some reasons why I believe the differences are in the catching away of the church and what we call the second coming of Christ. The first thing is, let's look again at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. And I pray that you'll get these scriptures. If not, please get the DVD or the CD because I want you to understand that the rapture of the church can happen at any moment. 
The question is, not is it going to happen. The question today, my friends, is are you ready when it happens? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Let's read it again. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That's the difference. One of the differences is at the catching away of the church, Jesus Christ, we're going to meet him in the middle of the air. But now let's look at Zechariah chapter 14 which speaks about the physical return of Jesus Christ to the earth. Notice, then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. Let's look at, okay, verse 4. And in that day, listen, this is speaking of the second coming, the second advent. In that day, his feet, will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Two different events. Then in the rapture of the church, Christ never returns. His feet never touch the ground. But in the second advent, his feet lands upon the Mount of Olives. In the rapture of the church, it comes in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. The second thing is, is that the second coming occurs after, listen closely, the great tribulation. Look at Matthew chapter 24, if you would please. Matthew chapter 24. Look at verse 28. It says, For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, the moon will not give her light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This is speaking about the second advent, the second coming, not the rapture. The rapture of the church or the catching away will occur before the tribulation. Let's look closely at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want you to get this because it's very important. This is probably one of the most important messages that I will ever preach in my life. And the Holy Spirit has given me a mandate that wherever I go to preach this message. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, notice it says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have time to develop the other scriptures, but basically what this is saying, that God is not going to allow the church to go through what the world goes through during the tribulation period. I don't understand why you want to go through it. I've heard people say, well, the church isn't mature enough and therefore God's going to let the church go through so we can be purified by the fire. Let me tell you something. The only thing fire does is burn you up if you're not ready to change. The only way the church is purified is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you are clean through the words. Oh, my which I've spoken unto you. The rapture of the church will be secret and instant. We just read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where it says in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together, meet him in the air. But notice the second coming will be visible by everyone that's alive. Go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. One minute after the rapture. 
It could happen at any moment. It could happen on your way home this afternoon. It could happen while you're slumbering, sleeping tonight in your bed. It could happen when you get up in the morning for breakfast and get that cup of coffee and those eggs and ham. It could happen at any moment. I want that to sink in. There are no other prophecies. We believe we're going to have revival. That would be icing on the cake before he returns. But there are no prophecies that need to be and have to be fulfilled for the catching away of the church to happen at any moment. Notice what Revelation 1, 7 says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and what? Every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth were mourned because of him. Even so, amen. In the rapture of the church, it's only the body of Christ, the believer that has been born again, that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that's going to see him and be able to go up when the trumpet sounds. Woo. When Jesus returns in the rapture of the church, he's our soul-seeking Savior who returns for the celebration. But when he comes in the second advent, he's coming to bring destruction upon the ungodly and those that rejected his word. Three reasons why I believe the rapture, rapture could happen. Let's talk about that. Three reasons why I believe the rapture could happen now. And I, I formed this in three T's so you'll be able to remember. Three T's. The first T as one of the signs why I believe this is the time the rapture could happen at any moment. The first T is technology. Go to Revelation chapter 13, would you please? which speaks about a time that's coming upon the face of the earth that no doubt technology will be at the forefront of it. Revelation chapter 13, look at verse 16. This is talking about during the reign of the Antichrist, which by the way happens during the tribulation. He calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Listen closely to this article. It's entitled Radio Frequency Identification, RFID. RFID is all around us. It is found in supermarkets, general retailers, electronic road tolls, company badges, farming, and in your pet dog. How it works. A scanner emits a short-range radio frequency signal, which is picked up by a small local RFID device or transponder tag. In one form, it can be about 8 millimeters or the size of a grain of rice. When this tag is passive with no batteries, it is energized by the scanning radiation, thereby enabling it to communicate ID information back to the scanner trans receiver. Passive tags can have very long lifetimes. In supermarkets, item level development of RFID technology allows for quick checkout hours that scan all products at once and eliminates the long lines and mistakes. But the more sinister application is in the realm of human implants. In 2004, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration gave its approval to apply digital solutions to sell their VeraChip tags for implementation into patients in hospitals. The intent was to provide immediate positive identification of patients both in hospitals and in emergencies. Tags would not contain medical data, but instead store and transmit, when energized, a unique 16-bit ID number that would be used to access, record, access records on a remote database. The tag was to be implanted into the fatty tissue of the upper arm. 
Similar technology can be in the form of a GPS trackable implant, an idea attractive to Japanese authorities for tagging and protecting school children. Others find the idea of an implant useful to, as an access mechanism instead of swipe cards. Clearly, an extremely attractive trading, buying, selling system would be to number and tag each individual and then detect their number remotely over a short distance for access to the bank account. It is claimed that such an implant would also reduce financial fraud since ATM transactions would only be possible if a person was physically present. I'm talking about right now. This technology is available and will be implemented. Technology, the advances in science, in medicine, are signs that the rapture of the church could happen at any moment. We know it could happen at any moment because this is going to take place during the tribulation. And I've already proven to you that the rapture will happen before the tribulation. So therefore, if the technology is ready, the rapture could be ready. It, the rapture, could happen at any The second T is terrorism. The increase of terrorism is another sign of the rapture of the church, the catching away. If you would, please look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. I hope you're being blessed. I hope the Holy Spirit is significantly doing something inside of you to raise you up to another level, to understand that we do not have time to mess around. Some of you think, well, I've got all the time in the world to live my life and to get right with God. But I want to remind you shortly that after the rapture of the church, those who had an opportunity, the door of grace will be closed. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. If you don't believe that we're living in the day of increased violence, 9-11 was no comparison. That was only the beginning of what the attackers, the terrorism, and those that have lawlessness in their spirit. I quote an article called Wars and Commotions. Jesus said in Luke 21, verse 9, When you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by or yet. The Greek word for commotions means disorder, confusion, tumult. It is an expanded definition that could also include acts and effects of terrorism such as bombings, but also demonstrations, protests, and riots. These things have almost arrived full force, but civil disobedience and related acts, including violence, will grow far worse than today's mirror front edge. The increase of violence, the increase of terrorism. Oh, I wish I had time to develop this idea more, but I just want to sow a seed into your spirit to understand that this is the time that the catching away of the church could happen at any moment. You say, well, I've got dreams and I've got plans. We all do, and I say keep on dreaming and keep on playing. But let's be aware that the rapture could happen at any moment. The last T I want to talk talk about is tolerationism. Tolerationism. I know that's a big word. 
its core root is tolerance, a toleration. To be tolerant means to sympathize or to give sympathy or indulgence for beliefs or practices differing from or conflicting with one's own. We in the body of Christ, yes, we believe we're coming together. But it's not to compromise the word of God. Isaiah chapter 5, if you would please, verse 20 gives us a prophetic word regarding the last days. He says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We live in a generation where the spirit of tolerism is on the move where you cannot speak out seemingly against that which is ungodly, that which is not right. People will scandalize you and make you out of a demon if you tell them the word of God teaches against that. Even in our political arena, there are those that are so far out there that they refuse to give us a voice for righteousness because they refuse to obey the commands of God. And I must say, and because it's public, I'll put it out there. I must say when we have Christian leaders, such as Pastor Rick Warren, who is joining forces with Islam and going and study the Quran and saying, where can we find things that we agree on? And let's make a religion called Chrislam, where we all will accept God as Allah where it will not matter whether or not you believe this way or that way. But my friends, I want you to understand, Jesus specifically says, in John chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. There is no other way to be saved except the born-again experience through the Lord Jesus Christ. But those who would preach the gospel of inclusion, such as Carlton Pearson, and will teach that anybody and everybody eventually is going to be saved, I hate to disappoint you, that's not what the Word of God says. Jesus says, if you believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sins. Jesus said through the Apostle John, who is he that is Antichrist except he that denies the Father and the Son? If you deny the birth of Jesus Christ and that He is God in the flesh, you are lost. There is no middle ground. You cannot choose your religious preference and expect God to accept it. He has one way. The spirit of tolerationism. Please, 2 Timothy chapter 4, as I move on, because I want to finish my message today. One minute after the rapture. It could. My friends, do you understand this? Are you ready? It could happen any moment. Second Timothy chapter four, verse one says, Now the Spirit speak expressively. It has more emphasis saying that in the latter time some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits to deceive spirits and doctrines of devils or demons verse 2 please glory to God First Timothy speaking lies in her pocket have an own conscience seared with the hot iron. You've heard, do what you want to do as long as it doesn't hurt someone else. That was a song years ago, It's Your Thing. 
do what you want to do. I can't tell you. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. No one wants to be told. People are so litigation happy. Some folks will want to sue you for smiling at them and others want to sue you because you frown. Tolerationism. The rapture could happen at any moment. Now, I want to get to this point. One minute after the rapture, the catching away of the church, what will take place? And I want to talk about two places. One is heaven and one is earth. Pastor has taught us that the rapture is going to make the difference. It's going to make the difference between the religious folks and the saved folks. It's going to make a difference between the fakers, the shakers, and the haters. Because my impression or my uh, reputation that I may have impressed you with will not impress God on that day. The first thing I want to look at is that, uh, uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 4, please. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. I pray that the Holy Spirit is stirring you today and encouraging you today. Revelation chapter 4, look at verse 1. Now this is John on the Isle of Patmos being translated in the Spirit. He says, after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a voice or trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Most uh, scholars and theologians, we believe that this is symbolic of the rapture or catching away which the trumpet sounded and he said, come up. How many of you believe that soon and very soon? That trumpet, the voice could say, come up. And in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, John says, this is what I saw when I got caught away or caught up immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one set upon the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance and there was a rainbow covenant around the throne in appearance like an emerald around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads. Uh, it would take series after series to go through and make mention of everything. But the thing I want you to understand is that one minute after the rapture, when the church takes place, when, when the rapture takes place, the church would immediately be standing before the throne of God, saturated in his presence. Immediately. Without ado, without avail, immediately when the call comes and the trumpet sounds, immediately those of us who have been snatched away, and I like what one translation says, removed by force. Gravity won't be able to hold us. 747s won't see us pass them by. The eagles and the birds will have to part out of the way as the body of Christ is raised and loose from gravitational pull as we go through the stratosphere, the ionosphere, as we walk beyond the stars into the throne room of Almighty God. Ooh, that ought to get you excited. I'm talking about it could happen anymore. 
we get before the throne of God. Please, might I have time? Might I impose on you for one moment to submit to you? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Sister Yvette, I know I didn't intend. I just told I'd go with the flow. Uh, because there's this, this is so big. It's, it's so, uh, this is without measure. But it could happen. I want you to get there. It could happen. At any moment. At any moment. It could happen at any moment. Those of us that are ready to go. Oh, dear friend, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It could happen at any moment. One minute after the rapture, we're standing before the presence of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. Let's begin there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is strong, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heaven. Somebody get ready to take on a new garment, a new outfit. For in this we groan, right now I'm groaning, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven if indeed having been clothed we should not be found naked for we who are in this tent or this body we groan being burdened not because we want to be unclothed but further clothed that mortality might be swallowed up by life now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee an earnest payment a down payment that I am coming to get you again huh. every time you talk in tongues every time you prophesy every time the Holy Ghost uses you it's a down payment a sign that Christ will come and get you. Oh, I feel the anointing in here. Let me continue to read. Now who has prepared us for this very thing is God who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. But we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, these bodies that have experienced pain, these bodies that have experienced trouble and heartache and disease and infirmity will be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye because you cannot go there with this same body. There's got to be a glorification. There's got to be a changing of this body. No wonder the word says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot face him in your carnal realm. So we must be changed in the moment. in the twinkling of an eye pastor says liquid glory is going to fill our veins it can happen at any moment oh I'm not going to do that Can I finish next Sunday? Let me try to finish up with what's going to happen on earth and then we'll pick this up next Sunday. While the church is immediately standing before the presence of God, enjoying the worship and the praise and the glory of God on the earth, there will be an immediate saturation with demons and Satan himself. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then we're going to pray. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now remember Paul was dealing with the issue of whether or not Christ had already come. Some had said he had already returned. The Apostle Paul was answering, answering a theological question. And he says, do you not remember but when I was still with you, I told you these things. Verse 6. And now you know what is restraining or holding back that he may be revealed in his own time. And that's not only talking about Christ being revealed, but that's talking about the Antichrist being revealed. What is restraining? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Terrorism, evil, violence, all of that is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he be taken out of the way. This is speaking of the church or the body of Christ, but even importantly, it's speaking of the Holy Spirit. But where does the Holy Spirit live? in the body of Christ. Listen, if you're going to remove the container, you got to take the restraint. If you take the restrainer, you got to take the container. Oh. I'm going to deal with something next Sunday that's going to be a very powerful uh, insight because I spoke about the dispensation of grace is going to close. So I'm going to talk about those who are left behind, how will they be saved during the tribulation? You don't want to miss it. Well, first of all, you don't want to miss the rapture of the church. On earth, all of the hordes of hell and the powers of the air will invade planet earth one minute after church is gone. Think about it. There'll be no more intercessors on earth. There'll be no more praying in the Holy Ghost church field folks full of the Holy Ghost praying and speaking into the heavens. You need to think about this. There will be a darkness that will come into planet earth one minute after the rapture. One minute after the church is seized by force, gravitational pull, has no restraint on us. One minute, 60 seconds afterward, this earth will become saturated with demonic spirits that will begin to mold and make and create things that will happen during the tribulation. And my friend, if you miss the rapture, you will face demons like you've never faced them. You're going to face opposing spirits like you've never faced them. You're going to see people with all types of mechanisms and issues. It is going to be unreal. And the saddest part about it, there will be such a disease and death upon earth, and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, that the Bible talks about almost two-thirds of planet earth is going to be killed from famine, pestilence, and war. Are you sure you want to be here? If you miss the rapture of the church, that's what you're going to have to face. That's only one thing. There are so many other things that we need to talk about that time will not allow me to discuss today. But I want you to understand, and I hope you believe that at any moment this can happen. I didn't get to talk about the chaos that will be on planet Earth. The news media, I can see them now. CNN. This is... Johnny Quest reporting from Transylvania. We have a happening that's taken place. People all over the world have disappeared. This must be the abduction that we spoke about in 2012. Maybe the Mayan calendar was wrong and it happened this time. Can you imagine the chaos? It's 
going to be tragic to have a saved person living in the house with an unsaved person. Because that unsaved person is going to be stuck right here while that saved person is translated in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Driving down the highway, parking. That's the body of Christ. It's gone in the moment. In the twinkling. It can happen. In it. Say, Curtis, what is my remedy to be ready? It's very simple. For those that are viewing that are not saved, it's very simple. Because we're getting ready to pray. Not only for these that are here, but we're getting ready to pray for you. Maybe you'll watch this by DVD or CD. You may get a hold of these messages that have been preached at Tower of Strength that have been archived. You may get them after we're gone. And you're going to say, wow, he was right. But listen, here's the danger. If you're listening to a message or you've heard a message on the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you rejected that, I want you to understand if you do not accept that and the rapture happens and you're left, you will be eternally damned. Never again. Don't believe people who will tell you you'll have a second chance. There's no such thing as a second chance for those that had the opportunity to hear the gospel. When God closes the door of his grace, the dispensation is over. And if you had opportunity and you refused it, and Jesus Christ comes in the rapture, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you left, there's no more hope for salvation for you. It could happen any moment. Are you willing to take the risk that I can go on living life without Jesus Christ? If you're here, are you willing to take the chance of time and say, I'll wait till next Sunday to get it right? I'll wait till I go to another church to get it right. I've lived good all my life, but you don't understand. None of that is salvation. You say, well, I've been a preacher all my life, but do you know Jesus Christ? I've sung in the choir. I've been a deacon in the church, but are you saved? Religious experiences is not the same as Bible salvation. There's a simple formula. Romans chapter 10. The Apostle Paul says this. He says, The word of faith is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Now, he's not talking about speaking cars and airplanes and stuff into existence. He's talking about the word of faith, the confession of salvation. Because he goes on to explain he says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart man believes unto righteousness. I want to ask you to pray with me. I want to ask every head bowed here, please, in the sanctuary, those that are viewing by live stream, I'm asking that you would pray this simple prayer. We're going to pray it together. Would you do that with me right now? Lord Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth. I believe that you died at an old rugged cross. You were buried and you raised from the dead. Through your blood, I have forgiveness of sin. So, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. 
save me now. Forgive me of every one of my sins. Make me a new creature, a new person in Jesus Christ. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, if the rapture takes place within the next few seconds, we'll meet you in the rapture. We'll see you in the rapture. If you prayed that prayer, we'll see you in the rapture. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Give him a praise. One minute. Give him some praise. Are you rapture ready? I'm going the first call. Woo. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, Jesus. I pray the word of God has touched you and ministered to you today in a special way. And we appreciate the Lord for you so much. Amen. Let's give God a big God bless. Your pastor's coming at this time. Are you ready? Somebody said, what do I need to do? Or how, what do I need? All you need to do, I, I, I liken it this way. You take a magnet. How many ever taken a magnet? And you present it to a, a material. And if it's not of the same substance, no attraction. Am I right? But you take a magnet and the material is of the same substance. Gone, just like that. Mm -mm -mm. And all you have to do, don't be concerned with got to quit this, got to stop that. Got to. The Bible said, you believe in your heart confess it to your mouth and all it is is you put confidence in what Jesus Christ accomplished at Calvary to be saved it ain't got nothing to do with your actions your behavior your behavior doesn't get you saved it's your belief in your heart of what Jesus Christ accomplished at Calvary's cross it's powerful Man, when I grow up, I'm going to preach just like Brother Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's no way he can finish that today. There's too many loose ends. Next Sunday, I, I may mention finish it next Sunday, but next Sunday, the young people have already prepared to have next Sunday as a Christmas Sunday, and they're getting room, you know, doing everything they can in the back. We got about 40, 50 kids back there and, and uh, they're getting ready for next Sunday so if Brother Curtis is okay with this, we're going to let them have next Sunday and then what a way to start in a new year the following Sunday and if you don't finish it my, my, my Chase this rabbit all the way to the hole. Amen. Oh. Oh. Wonderful. My, my, my. And needed. We need this. You know, the Bible says, as he is so are we in this world. And, and it talks about when we realize that he is coming, that we will purify ourselves. And, and what it actually means is you'll become more committed. I don't know about you, but wife and I, everything we do revolves around church, the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And, and the, the closer we come, to, and just look around you, church. Just look around you, all that's going on. And, and, but as the devil's getting meaner, 
God's spirit and presence is getting more real. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good, Brother Curtis. I, my, my, my. And I, I encourage you, and our altars are always open. If you feel like you need to come up today and rededicate your life, whatever you feel like you need to do, if there's anything lacking in your heart, get on up here. Because he's right. It could happen any minute. Amen. I think it'd be good if church just all come forward. Let's get up here and stand up here and, and uh, be dismissed. And, and we got play practice Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Also Saturday at 11 o'clock. That's play practice for the kids and everybody involved. This includes the choir. That's all she's got on here. Okay. Yeah. What a gift. All right, let's come up. Let's just just come up and gather around the front and, and, and be dismissed. Could we do that? Praise God. Hug Brother Curtis's neck. Oh, we need to be stirred. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you today mm, for your word. Anointed word. Thank you, Lord, for the admonition and for revelation that you've given our brother Paul as he's wrote in his letters to the churches and you've given him revelation, thank you, Lord, that it's conveyed on to us, the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence today. Now, Lord, we just believe right now that any, anybody in this place that has a, a vacancy or there's a, something missing in their heart and in their life, that you feel it right now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Brother Curtis, lead us in, in a confession. Would you do that? Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, yes. we just submit everything to you right now <laughs> because it could happen at any moment. Our lives are in your hand. We release everything that concerns us unto you because you perfect those things that concerns us. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for people right now rededicating, recommitting. As we commit ourselves to you, we give ourselves away. We give ourselves to you to be used by you in these last days for however long you allow us to. And Father, right now we make a confession on the word of God that we are the whole. We are the well, we are the healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are miracles looking for a place to manifest in the name of Jesus. We praise you, Father, that we are the head and not the tail. 
We are the lenders and not the borrowers. We are above only and not beneath in Jesus' name. We are more than conquerors through him that has loved us. We thank you that we are overcomers in Jesus' name. That we always triumph through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name that no weapon formed against us prospers. No evil befalls us or come nigh our dwelling. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that we walk and live in overflow. Increase and abundance, not in shortage and lack. In the name of Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name that we are gospel preachers, teachers, and ministers. And we share the good news everywhere we go. We are not hindered in Jesus' name a block, but we walk in freedom and liberty. We thank you for this today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Let me ask, do we have any first-time visitors? First-time.